Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glad to have all of you on this morning. Praise God. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on in and type the word better. Let's invite five people to join us this morning. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Good to have all of you on this morning. Hope your rest was um, peaceful, restful. Glory to God. Move this back a little bit here. There we go. Good morning, Instagram. Good morning, Facebook. Glad to have all of you on this morning. There we go. I think that's a little better shot. Come on and invite someone. Come on and um, invite someone on. Let them know that we're on this morning to pray together. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Glad to have all of you on this morning. Again, we're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. Come on and type in the word better, 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 better. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <clears throat> Get us some music here. We're going to start in about one minute. We'll give everybody time to come in. Type the word better and then please, ma'am, please, sir, invite five people. Okay. Invite that share it with five people. Glory to God. Start a watch party in Jesus name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise God. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Want to be a source of encouragement to you this morning. Hey, good morning, Mother Ellis. Good morning, Sister Victoria. Good morning, Councilwoman Archie. Good morning. Sister Shonda, I believe. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Kim. What's going on here? Good morning. Glad to have all of you on. Good morning, Sister Bailey. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Good morning. Go ahead, get your Bibles out. Move this back a little bit. Well, glad to have all of you on this morning on Instagram and on Facebook. Glad to have all of you on again. If you're coming in, if you would, please like and share. We do want to ask you also to, if you haven't liked our page and followed our page, you can follow us on Facebook at New Come and See Church. You can also follow us at Lighthouse Ministries. You can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. Um, Soon to be LinkedIn. We do also have our YouTube channel where you can go back and look at all of our um, sermons from the past. You can share them, I believe. So, again, like, share, follow. We do appreciate all of you for joining us in Jesus' name. All right, let's go. <clears throat> uh, this is what I believe the Lord has laid on my heart to share with all of you this morning. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. 2 Corinthians, somebody type that in for me. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, For we walk by faith 
not by sight. We don't walk just by what we can see, feel, hear, touch, taste. We walk by faith and not by sight. Okay? Go to Romans chapter 10. Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it would be fair for us to say faith equals the word of God. How do I know I'm in faith? Do you have the word of God on the issue? Faith is not just, you know, I hear people say, oh, I'm stepping out on blind faith. You're not going to get anything. Faith, Bible faith is based on the word. And that word has to be preached so that faith can come. As believers, we're not just bound by what we see in this natural world. We walk by the word. All right, go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to look at verse 6. Hebrews 11 and 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Morning, Sister Michelle. Morning, Lady Ava. Good morning, everyone. Come on in and hit like and share. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a punisher. No, the Bible says he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, if faith equals the word of God, we can put the word of God in here and we can get a clear understanding of what the scripture is saying. But without the word it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Faith equals the word, so without the word, you have no faith. So in order to find out if I'm in faith, what scripture do you have? Okay, Faith begins where the will of God is known. The word of God is the will of God. Okay, No such thing in the kingdom of God is blind faith. Now that we're born again, we are citizens of the kingdom and we operate at a higher law than the world. Believers operate from a level of faith. We operate at, through the law of faith or we operate or we live our lives based on the word. As a believer, the word of God must become the final authority. In other words, I base my decision on what does the word say. I raise my children based on what the word says. I decide who I'm going to marry based on what the word says. Um, I decide where I'm going to go to church based on what the word says. I decide how I'm going to deal with difficult people on my job based on what the word says. Because we live by the word and we don't live by our five physical senses. I'm not saying you forget about the five physical senses. But as a believer, you live by the law of faith. What is a law? A law is a law is an established principle that will work the same way every time for anybody that'll get involved with it, okay? Like the law of gravity. The law of gravity doesn't discriminate. No matter if you're black, white, Baptist, Church of God in Christ, Church of God, the law of gravity said what goes up must come down. You walk off, off of my, walk up off of my house, guess what? You're going to fall down. Why? Because it's a law. Faith is a law. Okay? Faith is a law. Romans chapter 10, and then we're going to pray. Verse 8. It says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee. Or we can interchange the word and put faith is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith 
which we preach. So as a believer, where does faith have to be? Once you find the scripture in the word, you need to get that. You need to meditate that scripture. And then you need to speak that scripture out of your mouth. This is not something we just making up. We're going by what the word says. It says, the word is not thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess or say with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So forth and so on. Last scripture, Mark 11. Now, one of the things the Lord dealt with me was he told me this a long time ago. He said, son, the same way people get born again is the same way that they receive anything they need from me. Okay? Faith is the law of the kingdom. We operate for faith based on the word of God. Faith equals the word. If you don't have any word, you're not in faith. No, ma'am. No, sir. No such thing as blind faith. What does the scripture say? Where is your scripture that you're standing on? If you believe in God for something, where is your scripture? Okay, that's why it's important that you get in the word, you know the word, and you go to a church that teaches the word, all right? Then, after you get that word, you got to put it on your mouth, okay? And none of this is for God. This is for you. This is how the system works. You put that word on your mouth, you believe it in your heart or in your spirit. Put it in your mouth, believe it in your heart. That's how the system works. Now, unfortunately, in the church world, we don't teach faith as a whole. You know, and we got people, oh, I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing, and nothing ever happens. And what that does is it, 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 uh, it messes with your confidence in the things of God because we won't follow the principle in the word. Mark chapter 11, and then we're going to pray. Mark chapter 11. Look what Jesus said. Mark 11, verse 22. And Jesus answering and saith unto him, have faith in who? God. Not in the pastor, not in the bishop, not in the apostle, not in the government. Our faith should be in who? God. Listen to what Jesus says. Verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, whosoever shall do what? Say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt where in his heart. So we see, again, the mouth and the heart connection. Somebody type in mouth and heart connection. Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he or she shall have whatsoever he saith. I'm going to read that again. I want you to get it. Jesus said, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. That's why it's important to put the word on your mouth. You put the word on your mouth, you say what you believe. You say what you believe. You say what you believe. Now, many of us have been trained to speak what's going on in our life. I'm not ignoring what's going on in my life, but I'm tapping into the higher law, the law of faith. I believe what this word says over what my circumstances say. And a lot of us, the number one, the, the number one group of people who talk us out of our faith is our family. Our unbelieving, untaught, don't know the word family members. They don't believe nothing. They don't want you to believe nothing. And as far as they're concerned, it's just over. Okay? No, ma'am. No, we believe what the word says. Now, I had to learn something from my wife. If I'm standing in faith for something, I ain't got to share it with everybody. I've learned the discretion. Sometimes we try to share stuff with people that they ain't ready to receive. Okay? You try to share what you heard on prayer with folk. Listen, if they ain't spiritual people, they ain't going to hear it. They're going to say, what you listen to him for? He ain't no different than nobody else. You know what I'm saying? That's because they have no understanding. No understanding of the word, no understanding of anointed teaching. They just want, they just people who go want to go to church. Listen, if I just went to church and had no results, I would quit. In your life, you should be experiencing the results of the word. Okay? You should be experiencing the results of the word. Let's keep going. Verse 24. Jesus said, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Okay? 
I don't believe that I'm going to receive it when I get it. I believe that I receive it before I get it. What I'm talking about, I believe I receive my glasses. I believe I receive my glasses. I already got my glasses. Okay? I don't have to believe when it's in my possession. I believe that I receive it before I even get it. Why? Because I'm basing what I believe on the word. And listen, the Lord wanted me to share with you and then we're going to pray. Everything you need is in this word. You don't have to struggle financially. You don't, You got to get in this word and get full of what the word says about your finances. Flush out that doubt and unbelief. Stop listening to your family members who ain't got nothing, who ain't doing nothing. Listen, I, I, I got this thing uh, on my phone. I don't know if somebody sent it to me. It says, stop asking your poor friends and family how to manage money because they don't have any. And stop asking your single friends who ain't married or who don't have a relationship how to have a relationship. Doesn't make sense. You need to follow somebody who has proof of the word working in their life. And it's God's will that you walk by faith. But you can't walk by faith by what you don't know. That's why it's important we get in the word. Okay. I know, you know, uh, in Christendom, that's not popular. Uh, I, you may not get involved, invited to do a whole lot of revivals, but that doesn't matter. What matters in the lives of people is that their lives are changing because they can hear and understand the word. And the word has to be ministered with revelation. There's a lot of preaching going on in our pulpits, but ain't no revelation. Just because you minister knowledge to people or, or, or give them information, that don't mean it's revelation. There's a difference between information and revelation. Revelation comes from the Holy Ghost. When God takes that word that he gave you and he breathes on it, and it and, and it, it ignites and the light comes on so people can get an understanding and walk in it. And a lot of times we, we struggle with our faith because we're not hearing the word preached on a consistent basis. Now, don't know what nobody else's lane is. This is my lane. This is what I'm called to do. I can't be concerned about anybody else. That's why, I mean, I'm not supposed to fit in certain circles because that's not my lane. You got to find out what God called you to do and then walk in that lane. If you got to walk by yourself, you walk in that lane. You follow that lane. I'm not supposed to be a part of every preacher group. Nothing necessarily wrong with those preachers, but they're not going the same direction that I'm going. So I got to know my assignment and then stick to that assignment come hell or high water, whether people agree or disagree. Okay, But when I know what God has told me to do from up here, it don't matter what people are saying out here. You got to flow with God. Amen. So everything you and I need, we can get it from the word of God. You don't have to struggle financially. You don't have to struggle with your health. You need to get in the word. Lazy Christians will never experience the presence and power of God because they waiting on God to do something. God has already done everything he's going to do. It's up to us to believe what he said. Stand in faith until we get what we're standing there for. Amen? All right, so let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we come before you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory, Lord God. Thank you for the lesson on faith this morning. Bible faith. Not religious faith, but Bible faith. And Father, I declare and decree that more revelation will come so that people in this region, their eyes will be open. I pray that the eyes of their understanding will be enlightened, that they may know what is the hope of your calling and know what is the riches of the glory of the inheritance and the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of their power to the exceeding greatness of your power to them who believe. Hallelujah, Lord God. I thank you for it right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for revelation of your word. Thank you for understanding of your word. Thank you for raising up more men and women who will preach and teach the uncompromised word of faith, God, that people's lives will be changed, that people will be encouraged, God, that it will grow across denominational lines. It will grow across, hallelujah, 
ethnicity lines. Hallelujah, Lord God. It will grow go across regional lines, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it right now. Holy Spirit, we give reverence and honor and respect to you. You are God in the earth and you are God on the inside of us. You are our helper. You are our strengthener. You are our teacher. You are our guide. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that we are the head and not the tail. We thank you, Father, we are above only and we are not beneath and no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper. We declare that we will walk by faith. We will walk by the word and not by what we see in this physical world. Even though we're in this world, we're not of this world. We thank you, Father, that we are in the kingdom and the kingdom of God is on the inside of us, Lord God. And I thank you, Father, that we are agents of change, that we are affecting change in our communities. Hallelujah. In our neighborhoods, in our states, states in our cities, God. Hallelujah. Around the world, we are affecting change to the glory of God the Father. I thank you for raising up a strong army of faith who know their God. Your word says those who know their God will be strong and do great exploits, God. I declare and decree that every person under the sound of my voice will recognize and realize their purpose that you've called them to fulfill in this earth realm. I thank you that we won't go around this year without knowing what you call and anointed us to do. I thank you, Father God. In that anointing is our breakthrough. In that anointing it is, is our prosperity. In that anointing is our peace. In that anointing is our fulfillment. And so I declare and decree by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that every person that watches this video, every person that hears this video, I declare Declare, first of all, that they're born again. Secondly, I declare once they receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they will find out their plan, your plan and your purpose for their lives. Lord, we come praying for those who are discouraged this morning, those who are down and out, those who are distraught, distraught those who are worried, those who are full of fear. We take authority over fear. We bind worry in Jesus' name. And Lord, we cast the care over on you. Many of us, we're full of the world instead of being full of the word, God. Lord, give us a want to to want to. Give us a want to to get in the word. A want to to, to activate our faith. A want to to see the end of our faith. I declare those, Father God, who have sown in tears, they will reap in joy. I thank you that your joy is our strength. I thank you that in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Lord, I thank you that you fill our tongue with laughter and feel our mouth with singing. Hallelujah, Lord God. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor, Lord God. I thank you that we can laugh at the plan of the, the tactics of the enemy. I thank you that we know and we operate from a standpoint of victory. We know that Satan is already defeated, that he is under our feet, that we are the head and never again the tail, that we are to reign in this life as kings. Father, I pray that, hallelujah, that the eyes of our understanding will be in light as it relates to our identity in you, Lord God, that we would get a revelation of our identity in you, that Father God, inferiority and insecurity and, and all, all of these idiosyncrasies, I declare that they go now because revelation comes and we know and understand who we are in you, God. We're not what they called us. We're not what they said about us. We're not how they labeled us. We are what your word says about us. We are what the word says we are. We can do what the word says we can do. And we have everything the word says we can have. Hallelujah, Lord God. We will not settle for Lodabar when you called us to the palace. Hallelujah. We will not settle for the pit when you called us to the palace. Glory. Glory to God. I thank you that you brought us up out of the muck and the mire. You're bringing us up out of the pit. Up out of the pit of religion. Up out of the pit of sickness. Up out of the pit of disease. Up out of the pit of poverty. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Up out of the pit of marital distress. You're bringing us up and you're bringing us out. And we give you praise, God. This is our year of restoration, God. And we thank you, Lord God. And we come against what they're trying to do in Georgia. They're trying to hinder a certain group of people's vote. But I bind it. It's demonic. I take authority over the spirit of the oppressor. We agree now. We declare and decree 
that it will not pass in Jesus name. It will not pass. It will not work. I thank you for exposing every trick and every trap of the devil in our government in Jesus name. Oh, glory to God. We thank you, Lord God. And I thank you for removing wicked men and women from office and replacing them with the righteousness of God. We declare that it won't work. We speak confusion to the plan of the enemy in Jesus' name, in Georgia politics. We thank you, Father, that you know and we know nobody stole an election. They are just mad because African Americans got up off of their do-nothing and they did something. And so we come against the spirit of prejudice and racism in this country. It's yet a lie, but it's not more powerful than Jesus Christ. It's not more powerful than the word and it's not more powerful than the anointing. Hallelujah, Lord God. And we recognize this a spirit and we declare no more, and we release Jehovah Gamola. You are the God of vengeance. You are the God of recompense. Vengeance is yours, and you will repay. And I thank you that this is our year of recompense. This is our time of restoration. Everything that has been lost will be restored back to us 100-fold. We thank you for double for our trouble. We thank you that everything, I declare and decree everything that he's stolen from us will be completely and totally restored. Thank you for restoring our identity. Thank you for restoring our peace. Thank you for restoring our marriages. Thank you for restoring our health. And you're doing it speedily. Lord God. Oh, we give you praise and we give you glory. We magnify your name, God. Oh, God, I declare that the believers would come out of darkness and they will realize who they are because they have, they're walking in the marvelous light of the word, God. Oh, God, don't give us just logos, Father. We thank you for the logos, but we need a rhema. We need a right now where we need revelation of your word. Oh, glory to God and we give you praise. I thank you that people are getting saved like never before. I thank you that people are getting filled in the Holy Ghost in traditional churches like never before, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for the mighty revival that you're doing in this earth, God. And we declare COVID-19 is over. We come against any new strand in Jesus' name. We bind you, Satan. We know that you're behind it. You have no authority. And we bind the foolish fear of this vaccination. We understand and we know that it's not the mark of the beast. We don't have to be afraid. We walk by faith and not by sight. Too many people have died for us not to be vaccinated. Oh, we give you praise and glory. We magnify your name, Jesus. Lord, you are so worthy. We plead the blood of Jesus over these United States of America. We loose your angels all around us, God. Hallelujah. We give you praise and glory. We thank you, Father. We believe that we receive as we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Well, don't let anybody turn your faith off. Keep the switch of faith on. Just choose to believe the word. And let me, let me say this. Walking by faith is not just being positive. People think, oh, y'all just being positive. No, we're walking by what the word says, and the word is positive, okay? The word can bring light to a dark situation. The word can bring, uh, uh, the word can turn any situation around. And this word will work if you work. It. It's not bound. It's not bound by geography. It's not bound by color. It's not bound by ethnicity. See, this is what's so powerful. I keep going back to this and I'm done. The reason the powers that be did not want the slaves to learn to read because they didn't want them to learn to read this. One, to realize that slavery was wrong and realize who they were. They wanted them to stay oppressed because the, uh, the objective of the oppressor is to keep the people oppressed, to keep them under their thumb and keep them subservient to them. And I'll do that, Lord. I take authority over the slavery spirit in the state of Mississippi. I take authority over it. It's yellow line. I take authority over it in Jesus' name. I come against backwardness in this state, but I bind the spirit of slavery in this state, the state of Mississippi. I take authority. Jesus is Lord over the spirit of slavery. Oh, God, I pray that the believers will go free. I thank you that shackles are falling off their minds 
in Jesus' name. Low life, low living, hallelujah, living that's beneath their privilege, beneath the word of God. I declare that it's coming off in Jesus' name. As a matter of fact, I declare it's off and it's out now in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, why did you do that? Because the Holy Spirit led me to do it. All right, but I got to go. Y'all got to go. Got to get my babies to school. I love you all so much. Thank you for what you do for us. Thank you for sowing into our ministry. Thank you for joining with us. Thank all of those who gave to um, the, the Urban Alternative, Dr. Tony Evans out of Dallas, Texas. We're putting that check in the mail today. Uh, you still, still do have time if you would like to sow a seed. It's not going to us. Amen. We're sowing seeds. We're helping out where we can help out. Um, you can cash app us at New Come and See Church. Cash out New Come and See Church. That's the quickest way. And we'll, we'll get that to them today. Not a dime is going to us. We are blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Go and be a blessing to somebody today. Get your mind off yourself. Too many of us, we are so self-absorbed. Absorbed. And, and let me tell you something. When you get your mind off yourself, that's when your breakthrough will come. Amen. But look, I love you all. Pray for your boy. Uh, I go take my second dose of the COVID vaccine on tomorrow. May go live, may not. We'll see. Uh, I'm not afraid. And I declare I will not have any side effects. Why? Because I'm a man of faith. I can have what I say. I will not have one negative side effect. Glory to God. Um, I'll be traveling. I got to fly out on Friday. So pray me, for me. I'll be flying out. I'll be back on Monday. Join us Sunday. Oh, you don't want to miss Sunday. It's going to be a treat. Lady Ava Cooley is going to bring a word, an on-time word, 1015. 1015 on Facebook only this coming Sunday. Facebook only this, this coming Sunday. Pastor Ava Cooley is going to bring us a word. We're in great expectation. Pray for her as she prepares and so forth and so on. We're in great expectation. Listen, I love you all. Thank you for what you do for us for each other. We're all in this together. We're better together. I love you. Have a good day on purpose. See you next time. I'll see you next week, next Wednesday, 615.